This video is brought to you by MSI and their brand new Prestige Notebooks designed for professionals, creators, and those who work on the go. Each new Prestige laptop packs a slim and light design with a beautiful aluminum construction while still delivering high performance components such as Intel Core i7 processors and discrete NVIDIA graphics, including RTX GPUs in some models. Creators will love the factory calibrated IPS displays, silky glass touchpads, and creator optimizations. To learn more, click the links in the description below. Welcome back to the Hardware Unbox News Corner. It's Friday, so that means it's time to go through the week's news and just have a chat about what's going on in the PC hardware space right now. But before that, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I highly recommend watching the latest behind the scenes videos that we published this week. There's one each from Steve and myself, where we just discuss a whole bunch of stuff related to the channel. Seems like people are enjoying them, so go check that out. Uh, but yeah, now let's get on to the news. The first story I want to cover relates to AMD's Radeon RX 5700 XT 50th Anniversary Edition, which is quite some mouthful of a GPU name. Uh, if you remember, this is AMD's special edition of the RX 5700 XT that ships with a black and gold cooler design and comes slightly factory overclocked. It's set to cost $499 US dollars, a $50 premium over the regular version of the card. Now, I saw a news story this morning claiming that the 50th anniversary edition of this card will only be sold to those in the United States and China through AMD.com. The source for this story seems to be the French tech site Calcot Land. However, in good news for those in other territories, I have confirmed with AMD that the story is not true. The 50th anniversary edition is still a limited edition product and it won't have wide availability. For example, we won't be able to buy one here in Australia, but it will be available to more than just the United States and China. In fact, AMD provided me with the full list of countries. Uh, most are European. We have Austria, Belgium, Czech Republic, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. And of course, there's also Canada. Uh, I'm sure some people will be disappointed that their country isn't in the list. AMD says that they are working on expanding sales through AMD.com into other countries, but it doesn't sound like this will happen for this launch. Still, significant parts of Europe should be happy that the card isn't just restricted to the US and China like that report seemed to suggest. Intel have launched a new one-click overclocking tool for their ninth gen processors called the Intel Performance Maximizer. The idea of this utility is to make it easy for owners of K-suffix CPUs to overclock and get the most performance without fiddling around with the BIOS settings. It works through a fairly standard method of slowly ramping up clock speeds and validating each step through a stability test. When the CPU eventually crashes, the software drops down to the previous stable step and tries it all again with voltage tweaks until it finds that optimal stable point. All of this is achieved through a single button. At this stage, it's only compatible with six 9th gen processors, the Core i9 9900K and 9900KF, the Core i7 9700K and 9700KF, and the Core i5 9600K and 9600KF. You'll also need an overclocking capable Z series motherboard like Z390, I'm not sure why Intel's own 9th gen Core i3 9350KF for or older Coffee Lake 8th gen parts aren't compatible with the tool. It doesn't seem like these parts shouldn't work, but Intel does like to lock stuff down to encourage upgrades to the latest generation. When using this tool, Intel warns you that overclocking is not supported by the processor's warranty and then offers you what they are calling the Performance Tuning Protection Plan. For $20, US this plan gives you a one-time return for any processor killed through overclocking provided you bought the processor as a boxed model from a retail store. Those that have tested the tool say it works well, often pushing the 9900K up to a 5 GHz all-core overclock, depending on the silicon lottery, of course, and often at relatively low voltages. Intel's future plans for the tool include supporting per-core overclocking for optimizing performance further and support for future CPUs, including those in the HEDT line. It's probably not something enthusiast overclockers will use over manual tweaking, but the tool does sound promising for those with current Intel processors that can't be bothered doing all the tweaking required to get a good overclock. While PCIe 4.0 is only just now rolling out with AMD's third gen Ryzen processors and X570 motherboards, the specification is pushing ahead to PCIe 6.0, that's right, 6.0 in 2021. PCIe 5.0 has just been finalized in the last few weeks, so it makes sense that the PCI Special Interest Group is already at work on the next generation of PCIe. The key improvement to PCIe 6.0 is a doubling of bandwidth once again. PCIe 4.0 doubled bandwidth from 8GB 
gigatransfers per second per lane to 16 gigatransfers per second, allowing for transfer speeds near 32 gigabytes per second with the Time16 device. PCIe 5.0 doubles it again to 32 gigatransfers per second, which means PCIe 6.0 will bring us up to 64 gigatransfers per second. So for PCIe 6.0 Time16 devices, we're looking at 128 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. The development of PCIe has definitely accelerated in the last few years as well. We've been stuck with PCIe 3.0 for years now. The spec was finalized in 2010 and it took until 2017 to get PCIe 4.0. So while the last spec upgrade took seven years, these days in just four years, we're looking at jumping up two whole revisions. It typically takes manufacturers around two years to take the PCIe specification and implement it in new products. PCIe 4.0 was released in 2017 and in 2019, we're seeing the first products to use it, starting with AMD. Meanwhile, Intel has promised PCIe 5.0 chips in 2021, which is two years after the specs release this year. So for PCIe 6.0, we're looking at around 2023 for retail products with the spec being finalized in 2021. If you're after more technical details on what PCIe 6.0 is set to bring, once again, I'll point you to Anantec, who have all the relevant details. They also have a great article detailing the new changes in another spec update, NVMe 1.4, which I'm not going to cover here. Samsung are the first company to announce a gaming monitor with a 240Hz VA panel. The C27RG50 is a 27-inch curved monitor with a 1080p resolution and an eye-watering 240Hz refresh, which is certainly going to push the capabilities of VA technology, typically known for slow response times to its absolute limits. I'm interested to see how this panel will fare in the testing labs and how close it gets to true 240Hz in reality, especially as Samsung are quoting a 4 millisecond response time which is just barely fast enough for 240 Hz. Other specifications include support for FreeSync plus NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility. It's a 1500R curvature, 3000 to 1 contrast ratio and no HDR or wide gamut support. Samsung are launching the panel mid-July like a lot of new display releases and it will be priced around 400 US dollars. EA is a never-ending source for great stories. Just this week EA VP Kerry Hopkins fronted up to UK Parliament to discuss issues like loot boxes and gambling in video games and delivered this absolute gem of a quote. If you go to, I don't know what your version of Target is, a store that sells a lot of toys and you do a search for surprise toys, you will find that this is something people enjoy. They enjoy surprises. It is something that has been part of toys for years, whether it is Kinder Eggs or Hatchimals or LOL Surprise. We think the way we have implemented those kinds of mechanics, and FIFA of course is our big one, our FIFA ultimate team in our packs, is quite ethical and quite fun. It is enjoyable to people. Um, yeah, trying to spin loot boxes is merely surprise mechanics and claiming that it is quite ethical and quite fun is definitely a new one. Not sure I'll it'll pay off for EA, but hey, at least they tried. Intel are not outsourcing some 14 nanometer CPU production to Samsung. A story did the rounds this week claiming that Intel were in negotiations with Samsung to produce 14 nanometer Rocket Lake processors in Samsung's fabs for release in 2021. The reasoning behind this was supposedly to alleviate some of the strain on Intel's 14 nanometer manufacturing facilities, which are well known to be at capacity and are struggling to keep up with demand. But as it turns out, as confirmed by Tom's hardware, Intel are not negotiating with Samsung to manufacture CPUs. They are in talks with the company to shift some of their less performance critical products over to Samsung's 14 nanometer tech, like chipsets for example, but CPUs are not part of this discussion. And to be honest, this makes a lot more sense than Intel shifting a CPU line, probably one that's been designed specifically for Intel's fab technology over to a third party. Intel has already rolled some chipsets back to 22 nanometers in the wake of 14 nanometer shortages last year and has allegedly used TSMC for some outsourcing in the past. Anytime Intel uses a third party for manufacturing, the deals and details are typically kept secret, but the company has confirmed these sorts of agreements have been happening for some time. Anyway, Intel's ongoing challenges with their fabs continue to be an interesting story and I'm eager to see what happens when the company can finally start shipping some chips on 10 nanometers, which is supposed to happen later this year. Final topic for this week, we have pricing information for Corsair's upcoming MP600 PCIe 4.0 SSD, which gives us a bit of a taste of where premium, high-performance SSDs will sit in the market. According to Calcott Land, the MP600 in its 1TB capacity has a price tag of $249 
euros, while the two terabyte model sits at 449 euros, including tax. This is in contrast to 160 euros for Corsair's MP510 960 gigabyte model and 320 euros for the 1920 gigabyte model. So we're looking at a 35 to 40% higher price, which I guess isn't all that surprising given the performance Corsair are promising, including sequential read speeds of up to 4.95 gigabytes per second. Whether or not you'll actually need this sort of performance is another question, and I guess we'll have to determine that uh, and base it on the workloads that you guys are using. Uh, that's it for this week's News Corner. Subscribe to get this segment in your inbox every week. Consider supporting us on Patreon, where you can watch some of our new behind-the-scenes videos. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one.